240 538 minus income plus expenses and we're using that 9% rate so 1,070-71505 then we come over to the interest we're already paying at the 6.75 is 1,353.03 so when I see that big of a gap I, I tell my clients uh, that doesn't make sense to me so velocity banking the whole way through on this particular mortgage would would not make sense for me personally right yeah now yeah. if we were to get a home equity line of credit at a 6.75 percent or lower or a little closer to 6.75 percent then maybe this would this would make sense right so for for those reasons, I I I'm not even gonna try and make this make sense or force this to make sense because I'm like this that's too far of a gap for me, right? Yeah, yeah. Um. So I wouldn't I wouldn't put myself in a first lien HELOC to solve this. But if I gave myself if I acquired a second position home equity line of credit on my primary property let's say and i'm able to get a four to five six percent anything lower than 6.75 percent intro rate yep. on you know my heloc then the question is do i even go after the tennessee property the 240 first or does it make sense to go after um a smaller property and then so if we were to look at the different properties so yeah. 240 538 um 0.71 and what was the principal and interest payment on this 15 1551 i told but when yeah. you calculated i think it came around 1571 that. Or 1587 you have written i can see on your whiteboard yeah so that one gets a 155 on the cash flow index look at the 2041 mortgage payment is 353.77 plus 584 204.48. Then we got the 94,000. That's 181. 60 plus 269.68. Right, so we got these numbers so far. Go to the Texas one. Texas is 263. And 940.07. So that's 12. Oh, we'll do Texas, 210, 481, divided by, okay, done four. <clears throat> yeah, so the primary property would be the last one because that's like the biggest debt. We'll do the Florida one real quick. So that's 542, 49, 958, 6, 603, divided by, okay. So it looks like, looks like, looks like Tennessee is winning. Um, in terms of that, that would be like the first one we go after, let's just say. Mm -hmm. And the only way this makes sense for me is either going with a second lean HELOC is what I would prefer yeah. to do. And with a second lean HELOC, they typically have these one year intro rates that you can find and it would, and it would be below 6.75% or right at 6.75%. For the first year and then i also want to leverage maybe a zero percent credit card for 12 months or longer with no balance transfer fee so yeah. this to me is a better version of velocity banking and to put that to put this into a software and tell you what to do that's where i haven't found the right software that can show me how to do that. Yeah. So that's been my dilemma where it's like, first off, it's like the people on the velocity banking side are always pushing first lane HELOCs when they really don't make sense some of the time, right? This doesn't make yeah. sense to do it. I yeah. think if you're, you know, with your primary property, if, if we were to turn that into a first lane HELOC, maybe that doesn't even make sense. You know, you're at a 2.75% you know, um, yeah. interest rate and to unlock that and turn it, turn a half a million dollars into nine, nine and a half percent. It's just, it yeah, unreasonable um, for, for me to con consider. But this makes way more sense where it's like, well, if I can move 
a lot of that 240 that's sitting at 6.75% and move it in chunks, small chunks. And that's the other problem that I found with the softwares that I've seen is it doesn't typically tell me to make the right chunk according to the math that I would use, right? So if we, if we were able to get it, if we were able to get a second lien HELOC, let's just say for 100K and we get the same exact interest rate, 6.75%, yeah. right? And that's our intro rate for the first year. Great, cool. So now what chunk amount would make sense to hit this 240 at 6.75% amortized and, and do velocity banking? Well, when we look at the, the cash flow, right? And in this scenario, with a second lien, we would still have the normal um, mortgage payment because that didn't get removed, right? Yeah. So our cash flow, we're going to use the the forty five hundred number cash flow, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if I'm at forty five hundred cash flow times twelve, that's fifty four k, and then a hundred thousand times two thirds, 66 K. Okay. This is now my chunk range. I haven't yeah. seen, I haven't seen a software that does this, right? Yeah. And it like tells yeah. me what makes you really sense. You need to develop this. Uh, I mean, I, I can help you developing the software <laughs> based on the rules. So, yeah. No, but I understand. But I'm so surprised these MoneyMax guy, when they have so much of the software, why can't they add this module or this functionality also into it? Because with MoneyMax account, what they're what they're focused more on is showing people how to basically do debt snowball but faster, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you do debt snowball manual, debt snowball manual, mm -hmm. when you have this forty five hundred dollars, typically you're gonna make your extra payment when typically at end the, of the month. yeah end of the month with money max account it may tell you to make multiple payments to your debt right multiple payments to your debt that would eventually total up to the 45 within the 30 day period of when you get your paychecks yep. right so because if and this the only way to fully maximize the money max account is once you buy it you also need to get the the subscription they have a they have a subscription in there where you connect all your bank accounts so it so it automatically deposits all your transactions money in money out so it sees that and then it'll know on this day pay 500 on this pay set pay 700 on this pay pay 900 toward this debt right let's say it's the mortgage that we're targeting yeah that would would speed up that snowball manual right by by a little bit okay Interesting. um now with velocity banking it's you know hand paper but i get the best of both worlds because if you were to match someone that pays Four thousand five hundred a month. At the end of every month for twelve months, they they would have paid fifty four thousand to the principal. Yep. If I do that in month one of that same twelve month cycle, my mortgage would be paid off faster than them, hands down. Okay. Okay. Now the issue that you have to solve for is how do you come up with fifty four thousand in the first month, right? How do you come up with that money in the first month? So then it's a matter of, okay, well, if I leverage a HELOC, I need to make sure that when I make that $54,000 chunk, let's say in month one, that my interest cost to borrow 54,000 is not more than the guy that's just doing payments of $4,500. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if we can yeah. find a HELOC that's at 6.75% or lower, you will absolutely pay less interest because now we're using 100% of our income to now manipulate that 6.75 down to like two, three percent ish range. And we need this as well to help out. We need a credit card that we're gonna run bills on, get cashback rewards and points. I also don't know how to factor that into a software, like how to show for that. And having another credit card that you literally take the gap between 54 and 66, let's say. 66,000 minus 54 is 12,000. Let's say you got a 0% credit card and you put 12,000 on it, 
for 12 months and no transfer fee. So it costs you absolutely nothing to park $12,000 out of here into the card. And instead of paying 6.75%, now you're paying zero for the next 12 months. And you're just going to pay the monthly minimum payment back to the card from your debt tool, from your HELOC. What does that, what does that do in interest savings? And, you know, all, all these different things are not being factored in. Um, that I think replace your university with their calculator, it's just not showing. And so they're showing 71 months. And I, I mean, again, that looks terrible. I would not do that. Um, that snowball showed 46 months or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. To be completely uh, debt free. And then the Money Max account is probably going to beat that a little bit or match it up. And yeah. then. Velocity Banking should be able to do that faster by, by getting the jump start. And then here's where I finish off. Here's where, where I'm much different from all the other Velocity Banking people is I say, look, let's say your HELOC after the one year jumps up to 9%. Well, then what I tell my clients is don't use the HELOC because you already got your win. You got 12K on 0%. You did a $54,000 chunk in year one up front. You dramatically cut off the amortization schedule. So your, your monthly payment is now working stronger than the guy that's paying his $4,500. You, you already got the win. You're ahead by, let's say, a year now, whatever the case may be. Secure your win by going back to debt snowball and make extra payments. If... If our HELOC only increases by a percentage point, like 1%, um, and the mortgage is at 6.75, and you've already got a, you know, a lead hit, then what you don't want to do is do another 54K chunk. Yeah. So what you would do is smaller chunks. So maybe you're doing smaller chunks of 10 to 20K or less because yeah. you can control 10 to 20,000 easier than 54,000 at seven and a half, eight and a half percent. As long as we can bring our interest cost to borrow less than what our interest cost is on the payment, the mortgage payment itself, then we're always going to be ahead of debt snowball, right? And it's, and again, it's okay to come back to debt snowball and just, you know, finish it out because you already got your boost, right? Two, 240, 538 minus 66,000 you're down to 174, it's gonna take the other guy 15 plus months probably to get there to 174 and understand that immediately going from 240 to 174, the normal mortgage payment that we're still, we still have to make each and every month is now, is now going to be working stronger for me. And that's what, that's what puts me ahead. So then all I need to do it's just is hold my lead by I it's like boom made the chunk done great lovely when this expires stick it back in the in the HELOC velocity bank that and then stop doing velocity banking altogether do that snowball my 4500 is working stronger than the other guy's 4500 right and if I find another zero percent credit card that I can use for um to, to move another you know balance you know i could do that again do like do like a 10k 15k whatever it is and this thing would be done in in no time um it would it would definitely go faster than 46 months right for that for that yeah. 240. yeah 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 i mean the key thing is to find a key lock less than 66.75 percent for a year right or right or right at or or right at 6.75 or or I would say maybe no more than a point higher, a point two points, right? Okay. Um, let's we can look at what the what the net interest cost is, right? It, you know, we compare it. You look at okay, what would would seven and a half make sense with this, and then we could run that. We know that nine percent, according to where you're at on the amortization schedule. That's another thing we have to keep in mind is how far are we on this 240 at 6.75 on the amortization schedule of that mortgage? 
right? Yeah. This is our interest, 1353.03 at six point yeah. at six point seven five percent, right? So yeah. as so as yeah. long as I can find a, a HELOC where in the first month, preferably, I'm I'm paying less than that in in interest, then I'm gonna have a, a positive gain. Now here's the here's where you can make sense of a HELOC at let's say let's say nine percent but it's on a hundred grand not the whole 240 that's where you get your difference because we're not even we're not even borrowing a hundred a yeah. hundred thousand at nine percent what do, let's say we did the the 54 right at nine percent by by 12 that's 405 dollars in interest so we need to look at your current amortization schedule on your 240 and we would need to see if I make $54,000 principal payment right now to the 240, what would it do to this interest? How much would it drop by? And, and that's for, we look at for 12 months, how much did it drop that by, right? We, we evaluate that, we see what that difference is. Now we say, okay, I'm gonna pay about $405 or less in the first month of Velocity Banking when I owe 54K, right? And if we uh, I erase this, we can do the math on that together. Say 54K was our chunk, and we're gonna use a 9% HELOC. Again, I'm always an advocate of finding the lowest rate possible, but I'm gonna use the highest number. So minus income, we got lowest balance, and then our ending balance um 24 five, five, nine minus this is our expenses so everything stays the same the payment didn't change 29 four, four, one plus 20,059 times 9 29 before so we went from 405 to 32765 which is an overestimation because I'm never going to owe 54,000 for more than one day. So I'm never going to pay $13.31. So that number is yeah. going to be slightly less, but keep it overestimated on purpose for the sake of, yeah. of the conversation here. So I went from 405 to 32765 in the first month of doing velocity banking. And if we just go one more month out, this is how I determine if this would make sense for me or not. 495, we do it again. Minus income plus expenses, 45k. See how much it goes down by. Again, overestimated. On average, this is reducing by $33 a month. So there'll be a $365 drop in interest. So if I do 327.65 times 12 minus 365. Whoops. That one time. That's the most amount of interest I'll pay in, in a year at 9% on 54K owed. I'll never pay that. So minus 365. This is super overestimated. So what is that? So on 54K, on 54K, I paid less than 6.5%. So I took nine, brought it down to six and a half overestimated in reality it's probably going to be around five and a half and then you factor in the credit card usage each and every month running your bills on a credit card means more money stood in the heloc which means maybe we're bringing this down to five percent now you see the difference yeah. so even yeah. if so even if i'm not saying go and just get any heloc but even if you got a heloc at nine percent by doing velocity banking for one year just one year only, you would be ahead of that snowball. If you made a $54,000 chunk, right? And that's just looking at 54K. If we were to tack on 12,000 on a 0% credit card with no balance transfer fee, what does 66,000 do to this number of the 135303? Because you have to understand like, whatever I pay over here, it came from here, it, it, you know, right? That makes sense, right? This is not new interest I'm creating. It came from the mortgage. Yeah. What we have to solve for is to make sure that we don't pay more interest over here than what was already coming out of the mortgage. That's the key. If you figure that out, then that's, that's the game. That's the play. And it's like, oh, all right. Well, let me go and find the lowest rate HELOC I can find, knowing that even if I ended up at nine, I could still make sense 
of moving 6.75 to 9. At some point, there would be like, hey, this doesn't make sense. Like for example, if you got a HELOC at 12% and you try to move 6.75 to 12, then your margin is getting tighter and tighter and tighter. It's, it's not gonna make sense, right? You're, you're, you're forcing the strategy to work in your favor rather than just doing the homework to go and find the bank. The problem is, the problem is when you go and research banks, the good ones, they don't have the best marketing. They're not going to pop up on page one of Google. Typically you have to hit page two, page three, page four, right? You have to go a little bit deeper. You have to go, you have to narrow your search in the Google. You have to put in your city, state, zip code, credit unions in, right? And that's where you're going to find these lower rates, the fives, the fours, the sixes, the sevens, the low eights, right? That's where you're going to find it. And it's like, okay, great. If I can get a second position home equity line of credit and I didn't have to pay a four or five K software to just show me an advanced level of snowball, I save that five K, go get a second lien HELOC, skip around, right? And just go direct to the bank, save the money, uh, no closing costs, no probably and no fees or anything, low restrictions, and make my first chunk at this 240 according to cash flow index that, that is you know looking like the most attractive property that we want to pay off, right? Out of all the properties that you have. Yeah. And we're off to the races, you know, and you get your feet wet, right? And then you get a little credit card, zero percent, and then you get a credit card that you run bills on. And again, you're turning your assumed six and a half down to like five, maybe even less than that, right? And each month gets better and better each month, less and less interest. And then your regular mortgage payment, remember, you're still paying it. So it's like each and every month, your regular mortgage payment just it, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And we have to account for those savings as well in our strategy yeah. that you would not see in Snowball because it takes, it takes longer to finally see it happening at 4,500 a month rather than 54,000 in one shot. Yeah. Right. Okay. 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 Yeah. So the, the thing which I'm seeing here, okay, yeah, because that in this case, that regular mortgage payment is still being paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you just want to minimize the interest cost of your second lien HELOC. Correct. You're, you're offsetting the interest you were already paying over here in your mortgage you're now seeing it show up here in the HELOC. We have to make sure it's not more over here than if you would have just sent 4,500 a month to the mortgage directly right, right, and right. see what the impact so we is. we need to see, yeah, with that amortization schedule that you were talking, that once you put those 54K, yeah. how much interest you save. So yeah. action, action step is get the amortization schedule directly from your provider. And we want to find out exactly how many months remaining on, on this mortgage at 240 at 6.75% at, you know, 15 something payment that we're, that we're at right now. How so many, how many payments exactly? And then I'm going to, I'm going to throw that on the amortization schedule. So yeah, I mean, this mortgage was taken in May, 2023. So actually this is, 12 months less than 30 years, so 29 years. All right, so we got exactly 29 years left on it. So yeah, uh, let's, let me, I do have to go in a little exactly. bit. I got another um, call I coming up. But log maybe. in right now to file, get that amortization schedule. Okay, and then I'm gonna pull up an Excel sheet here. See if I can plug it in quickly. Yeah, here you go. I have the amortization schedule in front of me. Let me. Save it. You want it in Excel or PDF would do? Yeah, you can just tell me the numbers. I'm six point seven five. Yeah, I I have the numbers in front of. So me. give me the give me the number again of your principal and interest payment only. What was it? Okay, so I give you the June twenty twenty four number, which is coming up. The principal paid would be two hundred twenty six dollar. Four cent two two six point zero four and no, just give me the total. Just give me the just give me the total principal and interest payment that you're making every month. Oh, total one five seven seven point seven five. And the mortgage started. You said in March of twenty three. In May May of twenty twenty three. So it is started on five one twenty twenty three. So 
with this, we're paying 1,577.75. We do a $4,500, oh, actually, nope. We're gonna fast forward. We're gonna go to May. Maybe June. Let me fix this. I don't like the way it's showing. I think, let me just show it this way. We're at 240 and then it started from, ah, there we go. I, that's my problem. What was the original loan amount? Do you remember? Oh, oh. Original loan amount, I will tell you, where do I find that? Initial loan amount was 243255. 243255, yeah? There we go. Now it's exact. So let's say we made our first extra payment in June of $4,500, and we can see exactly what that difference was. So it brought it down to 299.44209. So from 324, 324, 73403 minus 299.44209. So just by making one extra payment of 4,500, you save 25,291.94 in interest, right? That's the damage. Did you find that? Uh, how, how did you find that 25,000 number? So let me, I'm gonna show you, ready? You see 324 right there? Yeah. That's the total amount of interest you'll pay on your property if all you did was pay the mortgage payment, right? Exactly. So on June of 2024, if I put extra mm. payment, see how it lowered it? Yeah. So I just, yeah. I just I minus, yeah, I just minus the two and that gave me the damage, right? Understood. So now let's do a fifty-four thousand dollar chunk. Does that do? <laughs> Whoa! All righty. So let's take a look. Brought it down to one thirty-nine. Uh, are there no loan recasting fee? Because uh, if you pay it in chunk, won't they charge you even for the recasting? No, no, we're not recasting. We don't. We don't have to okay, recast, yeah. right? We don't have to recast. Okay. We could, but we don't have to. Um, okay. although it would be interesting to compare what a recast would look like versus just making the payment directly and sticking to what you have, right? Mm -hmm. So at 139, that's what it dropped to. So 324, 734, 03 minus 139, 514, 34, so you save a hundred and eighty-five thousand two one nine six nine in interest. Yeah. So if we're gonna be, try to do an apples to apples comparison, we're gonna go twelve months out of extra payments of forty-five hundred dollars. Four, five, seven, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, forty-five. So I brought it down one. Four 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 two 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 five. Back. Let's compare. Boom 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 boom. Three two four seven three four three minus one forty four four two two point two five hundred and eighty thousand three eleven seventy eight. See that same dollar amount went to the mortgage. Same exact dollar amount went to the mortgage. In this case, we have. Uh, let's do this. Debt snowball saves a hundred and eighty thousand three eleven seven eight in interest. Velocity banking saves a hundred eighty five two one nine six nine in interest on the mortgage itself minus one eighty three eleven seven eight. So look, this is our playing ground now. We have a $4,907 lead, $4,907.91 lead over Snowball. So, but don't you have to subtract the interest of Tila? There you go. So in order, this is our gap that we got. Yeah. We need to shrink this number as much as humanly possible. True, true, true. Right? So the gap between 4907 and 356594, that probably looks like two, three month lead, right? Yeah. Is what I'm just super guessing here, totally overestimating. So if we can bring 54,000 to 5%, yeah, if we can bring 35 to like 2,700 in interest, that's a nice healthy gap. So you pay 2,700 over here, 
you saved 490791 more over here and our when at the end of 12 months we would look at the excel and we would look at the the um the principal and interest difference between the two so that would sim so that would simply mean that uh, no matter what if i stopped velocity banking and just kept doing 4500 4500 i'm going to keep gaining and gaining and gaining a lead against the guy that just started out at 4500 because the yeah, yeah, principal yeah. and interest are 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 different um so so that was just showing the 54. So now if we can bring this HELOC over a 12 month period at 9%, we can bring that to like here, 27. And then on top of that, let's say 12 months of running bills on a credit card got you 30, 50, 60, $70 in cashback rewards or just bill savings that's another say minus you know say six hundred dollars let's just say and then we have to factor in so, that twelve thousand that gives you an even so further on, boost <laughs> completely agree completely yeah. agree but on that point don't you get a hit on your credit score if you borrow that much from the credit card are you going to get a hit on your credit score yes your credit score is going to go down it's going to go up um, but you could care less because what do you need your credit for? You're in the process of eliminating debt, right? So if you already acquired your main tool, which is your HELOC, great. At the same time, you go get a credit card. It's, it's much easier to get approved for a credit card than it is for a HELOC. So you always want to go with the HELOC, your main tool first, get that approved. Then go get a credit card, or most people already have credit cards in place. And then from there, we can just simply uh, leverage the credit card on top of the HELOC to create more of a gap, right? Yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, no, no, it is pretty cool. I just don't have a software. You know, I just don't have a software that shows that. Shows that. Um, I, I haven't seen the software do this. Um, uh, I, would, uh, I would strongly encourage you to probably either hire someone to, who can do or to, who can develop this software for you. Yeah. Or if you want me, that you and me together, because I have a lot of contacts who do these software development at cheaper price, we can define the requirement and get, get it done instead of, let's say, either a spreadsheet or anything. And then you can see whether you want to sell that Again, software at a subscription or whatever. Yeah, I'm so, working on it. Uh, I, I completely agree. All this should be automated and this is really cool this stuff. Yeah. And at the same time, I just tell people like, once you know the formulas, it's it's fun to play with it. Just, you know, hand and paper and it really doesn't take you that long. Um, yeah. And then, you know, you get a nice amortization schedule like the one I showed. That one I pulled from uh, Mike Adams because he's great, but he no longer mm -hmm. creates content. So I leverage his um, uh, amortization calculator to get the exact number to what you have on your, on your mortgage. And then we see when the start date was, where we're at now, and then when we'll be making assumed payments and then kind of go from there.